name is Anya, and I've worked with both Flutterflow and Bubble, and I want to add in my two cents on the Flutterflow versus Bubble debate. I think I can sum this up in this is Bubble's biggest strength, flexibility, while affordability is Flutterflow's biggest strength. Flutterflow's biggest strength is also Bubble's biggest weakness, and vice versa. Starting with Flutterflow, Flutterflow uses an external database like Firestore or Supabase, which while at first glance seem inconvenient to have to connect these two applications, actually makes it so that maintaining your application is much more affordable. Additionally, Flutterflow does not have vendor lock-in, which just means that while I'm building in this no-code environment, Flutterflow is changing that to Dart code. And at any point, I can export that code and leave Flutterflow, so I'm not married to this particular platform. I mentioned that this was Bubble's biggest flaw because with Bubble, you do experience vendor lock-in. Your application needs to remain on Bubble, which means you're subject to their price changes and will have to scrap your application if you would like to move providers. They change their pricing to have to do with these workload units. And in the most basic plan, they give you 175K, which a lot of people found that for high-performing applications, this is not enough. So on top of the monthly subscription, they end up paying fees for how much of Bubble servers their applications are using. However, despite the fact that it is a little more expensive, I really do love Bubble just because of the raw flexibility it provides. You can query something from any perspective and you can grab information multiple levels down. Here I have a fruit object which has a name and then a list of fruits on the user. You may not really know what this means, but hopefully you can follow along enough. With Bubble, I'm able to grab all of these fruits and all of their names, something that I wouldn't have been able to do with Flutterflow. With Flutterflow, I would see that there is a list of fruits here, but I can't access it unless I do a separate query. Additionally, Bubble has conditional appearances. So based on a condition, then I can make this button's background color be red instead. Bubble also has a bunch of plugins that you can install, so if they don't already have a functionality that you want, I'm sure you can find it over here. And on the other hand, does not have this conditional visibility, so I am not able to do that. However, what they lack in no-code building options, they make up for with, with their custom code functionality, where you can actually write the code behind any action, function, or widget, and it will automatically integrate that with the no-code aspects of your application. This isn't for everyone, as it does require some coding computer science knowledge, but they do have a code co-pilot and AI assistant that will help you build as you go. A couple of things I want to mention. A lot of people say that the learning curve with Bubble is really steep, but personally, I found that it wasn't that hard. And while it does take a, a bit to get used to, I, ne I never really figured out what people were talking about. Both of these platforms have interchangeable principles. I learned Bubble first, and after that, it was really easy to pick up Flutterflow. So I suggest you just start. Don't worry about devoting time to learning a platform that might not be the one that you stick with, because these are skills that are going to be valuable. From a variety of different perspectives. 
to help you start your no code journey, I created a free zero to one at bubble.io course. So check out the link in the description box below or bit.ly slash zero to one bubble. with over three hours of instructional content. Thank you for watching. I hope this was helpful and let me know in the description box below, which one do you like better, Flutterflow or Bubble?